Hello everyone and welcome to a little discussion about air breathing engines in Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program. So the way Realism Overhaul configures jet engines, ramjet engines, and rapier type saber engines uh, is through a plugin called Advanced Jet Engines, which is required for Realism Overhaul. And it radically changes the way those engines work compared to regular Kerbal engines, much more so than Realism Overhaul changes the rocket engines. And that can be seen in particular in a section called Module Engines, which is normally in a configuration where you would find the thrust, the ISP, and uh, the fuel ratio. Uh, but here we see that it has a lot of extra data. It doesn't get rid of the other data, it just has some other data added to it. And this is in the configurations in the Advanced Jet Engine folder. This in particular is the configuration for the J58, the SR-71 engine that I've been using in my hypersonic liner development. And the hypersonic liner development is what brought this on because we had inconsistencies with the J58. Mines did not seem to obey the, pre uh, the temperature limit of Mach 4.1, so I was trying to figure out why. And of course this is a place to look. And other people had it uh, blowing up much earlier, and why is that? Uh, so I wanted to get down to that. And also, I want to potentially just design an engine that would do what we want it to do. Uh, instead of using the rapier engine, a lot of people want me to use the rapier engine, but the problem with the rapier engine is it's not how any engine is going to be designed because it uses liquid methane. It would be wonderful if somebody was going to design an engine like that with liquid methane, but precisely nobody is designing that engine. Um, they're all using liquid hydrogen, and for reasons that I'll explain, I'll, uh, I'll give you an example of this, but like the Sabre engine, which is a real engine that is air breathing first and then turns to rocket mode, it uses liquid hydrogen. And other engines have been developed that also use liquid hydrogen, but not liquid methane. And the use of liquid methane is sort of cheaty in this case, especially with the kind of performance that you get from the rapier engine before it has to get to rocket mode. Uh, I believe that it should not be able to get uh, to that high a Mach number before it changes over to rocket mode if it's being cooled by liquid methane. Uh, that's why they use liquid hydrogen. But anyway, uh, that aside, the kind of engine what I, that I want is one that still uses normal jet fuel, uh, or at least uh, maybe the amped up jet fuel that the J58 uses. But uh, the J58 can actually use regular jet fuel, it just won't get as much performance. Um, because it has to be refueled by tankers and all that. So, yeah. I want a, an engine that operates a little bit more normally, but can still push the boundaries uh, or reach the hypersonic region. But we'll, we need to figure out how to make such a realistic engine. So there's a little bit of a technical thing. And you can see from these that it seems a little bit complicated, but we can talk about what these are. Uh, so the area is the area of the engine itself, not, not the sort of front fan area in a, like a turbo fan, but the, the sort of compressor area um, where you're going to get, uh, well, yeah, oh, I'll just leave it at that. It should be a number that you look up. It's not like something you're going to be able to measure very easily. Um, bypass ratio is if you have a turbo fan, the, uh, that's going to be a number that, again, most of these numbers you're just going to have to find a source for it and look up, and actually even Wikipedia will have some of these numbers, but we're, we're doing a turbojet so it doesn't have a bypass fan, so zero there. This is the compressor pressure ratio, and again, a number you look up. Um, if we take a look at Wikipedia, it doesn't have this particular number for the J58. It has this overall pressure ratio, which is 7.5, close but uh, not quite the same, and that, that's just not quite the same overall, but uh, for other engines you might be able to find that. In general, if you uh, went online and tried to hunt for the number, I'm sure you'll be able to find that. Uh, but a lot of these numbers you have to just look up. Uh, you're not going to be able to like figure out from looking at the engine, uh, so that's just how it's going to be. But that's true of like ISPs and such anyway. Uh, fan pressure ratio here is zero. Um, this is the design Mach number, and I guess uh, if you're going to have something that's going to be able to take off, you, this is going to be fairly low, like it shows 0.3 here. Uh, we can scroll down to take a look at the ramjet for comparison. 
and here's the ramjet and you can see its design Mach number is 3.5 so you know it's not going to produce thrust at low Mach number so basically you can go with that uh, most of the engines here we, we can do a little bit of analysis by comparison um, this one is the F-18 engine it, it gets by with 0.9 which is actually pretty high um, I'm not entirely sure of the significance why why the the F-18 engine would be at 0.9 and the SR-71 engine design Mach number would be 0.3 no idea um, and that is not a uh, number that's very easy to look up either that might need some tweaking as you're going along and you, know, you try it out and if there's something wrong maybe move that down or up but otherwise I don't know um, uh, this seems to be a design temperature uh, and I do not know how to drive that and looking at the other engines it seems rather inconsistent um, though you know I mean it's it's consistent in that it's in the 200 ish range but not too sure what determines it I guess I mean it does make sense that the SR-71 engine would be hotter than some of the others that makes sense uh, like this is the engine from the SU-27 SU-30 and SU-32 Four, and it's a little bit cooler on the design temperature I think that's the temperature of the air coming in but I'm not sure so actually I think the air coming into the SR-71 engine should be hotter than that so I'm uh, iffy on that this is compressor efficiency this is turbine efficiency and this is nozzle efficiency and those will be you know 90% plus unless they're an early jet engine kind of thing so those are just your efficiency numbers and then this is the fuel combustion heat and so that depends on your fuel you recall in the previous video on the hypersonic line development I told you that the, the some of the properties of the fuel are actually coded into the engines this is one of those things and um, well I mean for jet fuel it's a little bit cooler than what we have down there uh, for instance, uh, here we have a F-100 used by the F-15 and F-16, and uh, here it says 22.5 times 10 to the 6, so it's actually um, many zeros after that. Uh, so just go with a 22 there, and uh, here it's basically 32 with the 6 zeros. So this is uh, much hotter. Okay, so that on the combustion heat. This is the turbine inlet temperature. Again, something you're going to have to look up. It's in Kelvin. And afterburner temperature in uh, Kelvin. And this is where it determines whether you have an afterburner or not. So if you have this be zero, then you don't have an afterburner. And since this has a number, it has an afterburner. Uh, we can compare. Uh, here is the Rolls Royce Snecma. This is the Concorde engine that I configured. So this is the only jet engine I've ever added to the game. And so here it has compressor, a compressor pressure ratio of 8.5. I looked it up and it seemed like the Concorde engine had 11.3. And uh, uh, the Mach number, I, uh, I, I couldn't figure it out uh, on my own. I just put 0.9 based on other engines and it seemed to work out. 250 against, again based on other engines. Um, I don't know why overall efficiency is 0.7. Maybe I should just go with 0.9 like this. Uh, the uh, the Concorde engine uses regular jet fuel, so I just copied that number. Um, turbine inlet temperature and uh, afterburner temperature are pretty standard. And thrust upper limit, well, that's more or less what you think it is, but that's like a hard line that it never reaches. So even if it says like 400, it's probably not going to get there because of the other numbers involved. And this is the highest temperature that the compressor can tolerate so this is going to be like what limits your speed and in theory uh, this is what's supposed to make it burn up right I mean this is the temperature limit right Mach 4.1 so in theory this is a number that says hey uh, burn up now and we have a number there and so I don't know why my, my engine did not burn up this is the exact configuration from the same install and it still seemed to be able to work until it ran out of air at Mach 5. So that's peculiar. 
Uh, actually, on the Concord engine, I I deliberately cheated on that. Uh, let's take a look at that because I wanted to see how fast I could push it. Uh, you can see the thrust upper limit is ridiculous, and so is the temperature. But you recall that did not mean that the Concord engine was just able to uh, endlessly accelerate, right? Uh, we we flattened out at a certain point. We couldn't go any further, so we saw that the what what the actual limits of the Concorde engines were regardless of this uh, the temperature limits of the Concorde engine probably well I, I don't even know if the temperature limits are working right now because of our experience with the SR-71 so I'm, I'm curious about that it's worth looking at the actual original part so here this is pointing at turbofan engine which is the stock part turbofan engine here and that's in the stock folder and you know this is the module engines that the stock part comes up with and it's a little bit more complicated than a normal rocket engine but as your min thrust max thrust and you can see the max thrust is what's being uh, being changed right here so uh, in it's interesting that it says wet thrust 151.2 but it sets max thrust to just 150 I'll, I'll just leave it be since I don't want to modify too many things Heat projection 75, it doesn't change that, but presumably some of these other numbers might tell it how much heat production it has, hopefully. Um, most of these are effect stuff, so like the shock diamond and stuff like that, and engine spool time, idle time, you're probably not going to change those, and exhaust damage multiplier, probably not going to change that. Intake air, I think will have to be changed by these numbers. And I assume that it managed, uh, I think actually here, well, this is just an animation though. But somewhere it's going to have to determine how much intake air it actually takes and it, that's not going to be determined by this. And same with the fuel flow. Now here's the thing. So what we noticed about my SR-71 is I had a constant 4000 uh, ISP. And why was that? I, I don't even know if it really had a constant 4000 ISP or whether it was just fooling us based on this number. And there's an, a velocity curve built in here and an atmosphere curve. But those didn't seem to have an effect. I mean, so this is where I'm confused and maybe somebody can help me. Why were we getting just a flat 4000 ISP? And what is the significance of the velocity curve and atmosphere curve here? I would expect that those would affect the ISP somehow, or do they just affect the thrust? So I'm going to have to look those up myself and get back to you on that. But what I want is an engine that can get us to Mach 5 without exploding, that has the sort of better ISP of an engine like the SR-71 engine, the J-58, and but also as the ramjet so eventually its ISP will drop severely it'll start out with something like 4000 and then it'll drop to maybe 2000 ish uh, when it's going really fast uh, pushing Mach 6 let's say but right around Mach 5 it might be getting 2400 2500 is what I'm looking for but can we do that well that depends on understanding these numbers and also why this particular engine is operating different than normal. So that's what I'm working on. Sorry, this is all very technical. I hope it's useful to somebody out there. Um, but here, this is the specific fuel consumption. This is how much fuel it... Uh, it's basically the inverse of your specific impulse. You could think of it that way. But I, I don't know what the units are that it's trying to measure this in. Uh, none of the documentation tells me what units it's in and that's uh, troublesome because it doesn't match many numbers and here it says it can't find a reference so yeah but the higher that number is the more fuel it's going to consume uh, per given thrust and time uh, so it's like again the opposite of the specific impulse and if we take a look at that point 0.8 and take a look at the Wikipedia page on thrust fuel consumption, we, s we see there's a J58 engine here. It lists its a specific fuel consumption as 1.9, but that's in pounds over pounds force times hours, which 
I don't think this is being measured in. Uh, it also gives grams per kilonewton seconds, which sounds more like the units that we have in Kerbal Space Program, but 54 is definitely nowhere near the number that we have listed in the configuration. And if we convert grams to kilograms, makes sense, right? Because we don't measure things in grams in Kerbal Space Program. We actually measure things in tons. But um, that number would just go to 0 0.054, and that's definitely not the same. So I don't know what units they're using uh, in the configuration file. It, it doesn't seem like the consistent uh, imperial units. It's not really the consistent metric units. And those seem to be the two options. You see SI and imperial here. This is the SI number, it is the imperial number. So one problem I have is I don't know how it's actually listing the number. Interestingly, the, the rapier here doesn't have that number at all. There's no specific fuel consumption here. And nor does the ramjet. This is the ramjet configuration. There's no specific fuel consumption number here. So I don't know what to do about that. Is that does that mean that those are still configured? Well, they can't be. It can't be that it's using the turbojet configuration for the ISP of this engine. So that's puzzling. Another note about specific fuel consumption, you do have to keep in mind that the situation is important, right? Um, this is the consumption of this engine dry, not afterburning. And in the configuration that we have in Realism Overhaul, in Advanced Jet Engines, it is the dry fuel consumption that it specifies. It does not ask for the afterburning fuel consumption. And so this is this engine wet. So that's that's sort of important. Look, I mean, it's 1.195 dry, and that's the afterburning fuel consumption of that jet. So I guess it is, it might be efficient. Re recalling, of course, the Concorde produces a lot more thrust, but this is actually taking thrust into consideration. It's per thrust. So it's like per kilonewton, how much fuel is it getting? Anyway, let's talk about the rapier type engines. And of course, the rapier is based on the Saber engine from uh, re reaction engines that was designed for the Skylon. And I would note uh, the, the goal is Mach 5.14 where it shuts off the intake and goes into closed cycle at 28.5 kilometers altitude. And that is with an uh, engine that uses liquid hydrogen to cool itself. Okay, the liquid hydrogen is not just a fuel. The liquid hydrogen is also cooling everything to make sure that it can reach those high velocities. Uh, the SR-71 engine does that as well. It uses the fuel to cool the parts uh, to get to high velocity. Uh, not all the parts. It's not as integrated as I think it is in the Saber engine. But the reason why in realism overhaul we have liquid methane instead of liquid hydrogen is actually because the stock part uh, initially uh, set the ISP to 360 seconds in vacuum and the f logical fuel to give you 360 seconds in vacuum is liquid methane but there is no engine that matches that there is no liquid methane version of this because you want the coolest fuel possible to cool the engine so that you can get to a high enough Mach number right the the whole point of having this sort of integrated system is to get to a high Mach number but then the rapier seems to be able to get to Mach 5.5 in air breathing mode despite using uh, less cooling fuel. So that's that's where I get a little bit iffy on it. On the other hand, uh, you'll note that for the Saber engine, the vacuum ISP is 460, so obviously better than the rapier engine. But the sea level ISP is 3,600 seconds. We saw from the rapier engine as we were using it, it, it has a sort of tepid about 2,000, 2,200 second ISP in air breathing mode. And so actually the, the Sabre engine is still better. The downside of the Sabre engine is you need the huge tanks for the liquid hydrogen. We do have the Sabre engine in my install, by the way. So if we want to use it, we could, we could do that. It's from B9. Um, 
Uh, that, uh, that is an option, though nobody mentioned it for some reason. Um, the trouble with it is you have to have the huge fuel tanks because liquid hydrogen is not very dense, and so everything ends up looking like the, the whatchamacallit, the Skylon. It always looks like the Skylon. Well, not exactly. Um, actually, reaction engines themselves are trying to build airliners, and they've got this uh, scimitar, which is derived from the Sabre engine, but doesn't have the rocket features, right? And it has higher efficiency, still burns liquid hydrogen, but it's meant for a much longer life uh, so that it can operate as an airliner. And that is to be used in this uh, configuration. This is the Reaction Engine's A2 hypersonic speed jet airliner. So there are competitors in this hypersonic race. Uh, I, I don't want to do this because they're already doing this. I want to compete with this. Um, it's tough though. It's tough to compete with this. It's going to have a top speed of Mach 5 plus and that's because it's using liquid hydrogen. Um, twice the specific impulse of kerosene. Not really. Um, that's complicated. That's not true really. Uh, it depends on the circumstances. Uh, but it's it's good, and it's much better w when it's uh, which got got a precooler. That's that's another thing. Our precoolers are completely useless, which which is sad. It is not a small thing, and that means that your ground facilities will have to be huge. You've got a length of 143 meters, and your takeoff weight is 400 tons on this. Uh, well, that, that's 300 passengers. I still don't know where they put the passengers, but that's pretty good actually with 300 passengers. But then we get into the Concorde problem. You've got 300 passengers. That's big. And you're going to have a lot of empty seats. Uh, and, you know, you got to have facility upgrades. So we want to start small and more frequent flights. Something that can fly often. And uh, this doesn't fit the bill. And that's how we want to compete with this particular system, with my own hypersonic system. But maybe we shouldn't go hypersonic. I don't know. Maybe pushing Mach 5 is not the way to go to compete. I mean, after all, we were looking at the Concorde, which went Mach 2. Maybe just having a airliner that goes Mach 4 would be sufficient. That's a thought, but I'll consider it and get your thoughts on that. But in general, um, yeah, uh, you, you end up with a lot of liquid hydrogen options for the pre-cooled jet engines. There's also this Atrix uh, air turbo ramjet engine with expander cycle. That's a Japanese idea that combines a turbojet with a ramjet to work up to Mach 6. And I thought about adding that to the game, but I don't think it's sufficiently different from, uh, from some of the things we have. It sort of sounds like a rapier engine, but again, liquid hydrogen. Um, or a, a Sabre engine, except without the rocket stuff. But uh, yeah, it's meant to go Mach 6 and use liquid hydrogen again. So let's say, uh, first of all, let's take a look at how I added the Rolls-Royce Necma. You see this plus part? And I just added a new one based on uh, this uh, B9 jet, uh, engine jet, turbojet. And that's the one at the top here. So it, uh, first of all, this configuration changed that and it set certain parameters that I sort of piggybacked off of because I didn't want to change everything to match uh, advanced jet engines. This seemed like a good engine to start off with because this is the one from the XB70, which means it's heavy. It's meant for a uh, high Mach flight. Also, uh, when I said I, I set the thrust upper limit, well, it did it here too. That's not my, my doing. Uh, so advanced jet engines itself just went ahead and set those upper limit. I just didn't change it. I changed. I guess I just went with the efficiency that they had here. That's why I had 0.7 there. So that's one way of doing it. And uh, for the ramjet, we might as well do the same thing. So here's the ramjet, right? AJE ramjet. It changed it. Well, let's just add another part based on turbojet. But, hmm, that leads to another question. Where does this tell it to use kerosene? It doesn't do it here. 
Okay, found it. Uh, it's actually in Realism Overhaul itself, in the RO Dependent Mods folder in the RO underscore AJE config is where it tells them all to be kerosene. Well, well we can we can add our own part. Uh, so let's see. I don't know if uh, we I'll I'll run up the game and we'll see if it works. So let's say we copy this ramjet. Okay? And I'm going to call it something else. I'm going to call it uh, one of the engines that we had that, that we saw. Maybe Atrex. Let's call it... Well, but that's a turbojet combo. See, I wouldn't mind having a turbojet. So that's a turbojet ramjet combination. Maybe what we need is a higher performing SR-71 to engine to match that. Because the SR-71 is a partial ramjet too. But for now, I'm just going to, uh, just so that we know how to do it, uh, we need to figure out some things about the SS-71 configuration, and I want you guys to help me out uh, with that. But uh, I'm going to add a new part, and we're going to call it uh, Hydro, uh, I'll keep it small caps, uh, Hydro Ramjet. Okay, and we're going to go LH2 Ramjet. I'm not gonna change anything else about it here. It's, uh, its efficiency should be different though, right? I also don't understand why the ramjet thrust upper limit is 500 where its max thrust is 700. And FHV is probably different for a hydrogen engine. The temperature of combustion for a hydrogen engine would be much higher, I think. Okay, well, on this page, heat of combustion on Wikipedia, we have upper and lower bounds for it. And you can see megajoules per kilogram, so that's why we have all those zeros. And hydrogen has 141, and a uh, minimum of 119 there. Uh, so you could figure out, that, and probably the efficiency number would uh, tell you how close you are to the top. Uh, but you can see methane is actually 55. I wonder if our... Uh, let me move that along. Um, this is only at 35 for methane. Oh, no, this is not methane. Sorry, this is ramjet. Where's my, where's my rapier? My rapier is around here somewhere. Yeah, here's the rapier. Uh, it's got 45. But actually, the rapier should have 50 to 55, according to Wikipedia page. So that's interesting. I'm not going to mess with it right now. I only want to mess with the engines I create. Because um, otherwise, you know, we have the problems where people don't have the same situation. I don't want to mess with things that will cause that. Uh, so I haven't changed the SS-71 engine at all. i just make a new engine if I wanted to do that. But here we see kerosene has 46. Diesel has 44. I wonder why uh, so many of the fuels that we have. I mean, it would seem like we would expect a higher number there than we're putting if the value is supposed to be in joules per kilogram. But again, I'm not going to mess with those. I'm just going to go back to the one I'm configuring and hope that that has something to do with its performance, right? Uh, the goal is to make sure that we have the right performance and there's no easy number that says, okay, this is the ISP. So I can't do it like that. Um, of course, with uh, sufficiently high number, where's my, okay, that's the normal ramjet. Here's the hydro ramjet. Uh, I, I don't know if it'll cause it to blow up or something, but let me put it at the lower bound number. Uh, so 1119.96 was what it said. I'm not going to change the thrust numbers. I don't know if there's anything else I need to change, except this is a real plume sort of thing, so I'm gonna make sure that that happens for my hydro ramjet. And then we need to tell this file, I don't know what other files, I mean, we're gonna find out once we run the game, what other files we might need to mess with to make sure that things work right. So here we see an example of one where it's changing the propellant on its own. And I'm just going to do that. So, at part, 
and we're gonna copy our part name hydro ramjet of course once I do this if I update AJE I have to remember that I've done this okay and so title well I don't know why that changes the title when we've done it here but okay oh probably because it configured yeah, let me just get rid of that okay and what we want is at name liquid hydrogen all right let's see if we've got a liquid hydrogen ramjet now or if we do not it's not the best thing to have but I, I, I'm just curious I'm just curious let's see okay so here we are with the peregrine 6 and now we have a liquid hydrogen ramjet but does it work well that's a good question first of all let's take a look at uh, what it says here compared to what the ramjet says uh, 500 kilonewtons area 0.5 and liquid hydrogen hopefully that's the right fuel consumption I didn't tell it how much liquid hydrogen to consume it calculates that on its own so that, that's all up to advanced jet engines uh, here kerosene 9 per second the liquid hydrogen was 111 per second but that's because um, less dense so the mass of what's going into the engine is probably you know more efficient but the volume that's going into the engine is uh, obviously much higher but otherwise the numbers are the same so let's uh, swap it but we're going to we won't be able to have it work for very long because um, we don't have much volume to work with in we don't have much space on I don't know what it's attaching to right now hold on let's just take these off first yeah we don't have any space to put the hydrogen so we'll only be able to run it for a short amount of time but we'll see how it operates and more importantly what is its ISP right that is uh, more efficient than the kerosene ones in theory is it true is it really more efficient uh, was the combustion heat number the right number to change to make that happen or is it going to have the same efficiency in which case it's wrong right okay so we're gonna fill this tank with liquid hydrogen that shouldn't make any difference to our center of mass maybe we can fill this up with liquid hydrogen too uh, probably won't make too much of a difference but it'll give us some extra liquid hydrogen okay let's see if our new part addition worked but this is not as complicated as adding a jet engine so that's that's gonna be the next thing but I, I need some help from you guys about the problems I was having uh, which I discussed earlier actually it'd be interesting if we could I wonder if there's dialogue for the internal mission missing method exception method not found flight camera set target I don't really care actually um, physics thermal display thermal data ah there we go okay well that might be helpful so now we can see the thermal data of the J58 engine and we can see the internal temperature for 60 Kelvin I think the number was set to, let me take a look at the configuration quickly and see what the number was set for it says a thousand two hundred so we'll see about that it's got 500 now I'm somewhat expecting that the ramjets are going to just like immediately explode because the hydrogen is much hotter but we'll have to see the internal temperature of the J58 would have been much hotter I think I thought it was a very hot engine I got that impression alright so now we're getting to 2.8 and the internal temperature it says here is just 590 Kelvin so maybe it's not the temperature limit that's our problem maybe it's the actual heat production that we seem to have very low heat production on this engine compared to what we might expect we could solve that by reducing the temperature uh, the temperature limit from 1200 to something less but a temperature limit of 1200 for an engine is not unreasonable all right here goes uh, nothing aha okay and what does the dialogue say melted its internals from heat so yes 
because hydrogen has that high heat production, it really couldn't sustain that. And so it does depend on the fuel that you're using. Hmm. So we've learned something. And that might be why stuff like the liquid methane had a lower number than the Wikipedia page suggested that it should have. And also our jet engines seem to have a lower number than the Wikipedia page suggests that we should have. Maybe we should just go with a lower number for the hydrogen as well. But we're going to have to figure out what number. Actually, um, let's see if we can find out. Let me take a quick look at the Saber engine to see what it has in that slot, right? Because it uses hydrogen. And they've got 92, basically. 92 times 10 to the 6th on the FHV number. So that's pretty hot. Uh, by comparison, the hydrogen engines that just blew up, uh, I had 119. So it's, uh, it's close. It's not too far away. But the the max T3, the temperature limit, is 2,000 Kelvin for the Sabre engine. So much higher than the SR-71, as you would expect. The Rapier also has 2,000. Uh, the engine that just blew up, let me take a quick look at what it had. It didn't really have a number there. Maybe I should add a number for it. The Ramjet engine did not have a number sp specified for the temperature there but maybe that's something I should just add in and specify up front. We do know that the ramjet also tends to overheat um, perhaps earlier than expected but maybe I mean it depends on whether you think it should be going Mach 7 or not. Anyway so that's where we're at. Um, it's a complicated sort of situation with the air breathing engines in realism overhaul it's a lot more complicated than the rocket engines in realism overhaul and I do want to design a specific engine for this purpose with specific requirements based on what I know is out there as far as real engines because you know the SR-71 engines are like 40 year old 50 year old technology I think we can do better and we can add those newer engines in here or something like them and see what we can do with those. So that's my hope and that's why I'm making the video so that you guys can uh, potentially help me out with the problems I'm having. So anyway, uh, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.